Welcome back to another episode of the Casey Campbell podcast. Casey Campbell with you, of course. Pleased to be joined by Thomas Kimmel of Cranbrook Hockey. How's it going? Good, thank you. Thank you for having me on. So uh, I know it's been a crazy few months for for you ever since, well, ever since really the season began. Mm. But what was uh, what has it been like since uh, the championship game? It's really kind of been surreal still. It's kind of just setting in. And then we had our end of the year hockey banquet a couple of days ago. And it's kind of just crazy how it all ended up wrapping up. Couldn't have been a better way to finish the season. Um, but I, I should ask this championship rings. Have they been, what's the update on that? Yeah. Yeah. So we have the order in for them. So hopefully we should get them fairly soon here. Okay. We might have to show them off later. Yeah, um, yeah. So, you know, this year for you has just been just absolutely, what would you describe this season as just overall? This season for me personally? Yes. I I think it's been probably one of the most difficult seasons for me as a player, just with making the transition from playing defense for my entire life to playing forward for my last season at Cranbrook here. It was probably the most difficult thing I've ever done in my life to have to completely relearn on an entirely new position in hockey. And it was, but towards the end, I kind of felt like I started to grow into it a little bit and got used to myself on the ice and it was seemed to go fairly well. So it was difficult in the beginning, but ended up fairly good. So. Um, so going into, you know, this, I, I obviously everyone it's well aware of how, you know, the story that you guys had and getting to getting to the finals and all that, and, you know, going through just every little thing, what was that like for you to just, you know, to go through the ups, the downs to get to this point? It was really incredible, especially to be a part of the locker room and to see how in the beginning of the season, we weren't necessarily the closest team. And thanks to working with uh, Strength Finder is what it's called and through a lady named Maureen, she was absolutely incredible for our team. She helped us to really come together. And in the beginning of the season, we were not really one and we weren't playing like we were one. And it was really kind of a rocky start to the beginning of the season but I think what really made the difference is we all just kind of came together in the end and we were able to really form bonds like I've never had before on a hockey team and it was like playing with guys I played with my whole life even though they were brand new this this season and it was really incredible to see the like the growth that the players had and the coaches and everybody had over the entirety of the season it was unbelievable yeah I think the biggest thing is when it comes to, you know, as one of the guys that has been around, been around the team the most, what was, uh, what was it like for you to kind of cap it off and, you know, to go out, to go out a champion? It was probably the best possible way. I mean, obviously because of the state championship, but it's, it was, seriously could not have ended a better way because all four years I've seen different teams and I've seen guys come and go and graduate and stuff like that. And my sophomore year coming in with a basically whole new team with losing a bunch of seniors. And then especially even going into my junior year, I think that we lost, I want to say 14 seniors, my sophomore year going into junior year at the end of the season. And it was really, really difficult for us to you know, kind of rebuild almost. It was these past two years have really been two rebuilding years and it was incredible to cap it off this way. So for a lot of people that don't know this, um, you are not from this area. And I'm you, not. No. You've had a quite the journey to get just to get here. Um, mm. Kind of talk about that. Yeah, so I have grown up in Colorado Springs, so just about an hour south of Denver, and uh, spent my entire hockey career there. I played for the Colorado Tigers and trained with the Colorado Rampage in the summer. And my mom is originally from Kalamazoo, Michigan, so not too far from here. And she had known people growing up that had gone to Cranbrook and just kind of not really wanting 
myself to play club hockey back in Colorado and not be very involved to my school, I found Cranbrook and had the opportunity to be a boarding student and also be involved with my school and still play really good hockey. It seemed like it was kind of the perfect fit for me, even with the long journey. So, so the year that you went to, to get to, um, to go to a completely brand new school, um, to start off with and to, you travel be so far away from home. Oh, and by the way, um, you know, your freshman year was the COVID year. Mm. So how, I'm always wondering, uh, everyone has their own story, but yours mm. is being so away from home during a very scary time for a lot of people. Yeah, absolutely. It was my freshman year was probably the most difficult year that I've ever faced in probably my entire life, just because, especially from a boarding student perspective, if you were to talk to Rento Saijo on the team, he'd probably give a very, very similar view to me. And he's even coming from further. We were not actually allowed to leave the dorms at all. My freshman year, I was stayed on campus 24 seven and it was extremely difficult, especially coming into a brand new place that I didn't know anybody. I didn't know really the area around here. I didn't know the campus very well. I'd only visited one time prior to actually coming here. And it was uh, extremely difficult my freshman year, especially with COVID and having the smaller class sizes and having to wear a mask everywhere. It was really difficult to kind of branch out and kind of force yourself to meet new people when in a time where nobody really wants to talk to you that much because they're afraid of getting sick yeah yeah how did you know looking back on that now what was uh can you believe that was three years ago and you entering in and obviously you know getting to to play different things and getting to learn a new basically a new community mm -hmm. yeah it was it really honestly though if i were to look back at it i think that it helped me mature a lot and it helped me to learn how to branch out and like meet new people and be super outgoing and you can't really be like an introvert or especially in a time like that when you kind of have to go almost door to door in the dorms and knock on people's door and say you know hey i'm you know so and so and just try to meet new people it was it really forced me to kind of grow up almost that freshman year and it really looking back on it i wouldn't change it for how it was because it forced me to make a home here because i didn't really have another option so yeah to to kind of be a part of you know this program all four years um a lot of people know how much were you around Obviously, your freshman year was when the varsity team when the last day championship was for Cranbrook. How much do you remember about that? My fresh of my freshman year when they won. Yes. Yeah, it was. Uh, I knew almost every single guy on the team, obviously, just from seeing them around the rink, and it was kind of surreal because it was interesting to have it where there was no fans in the stadium or anything like that, or a very select few amount of fans, and it wasn't really that big of a deal it seemed like on campus not like it was this year where we had a celebration in the main campus after we actually won and it really was nothing compared to how it was this year it wasn't really I mean it was obviously talked about at school but it wasn't as big of a deal as it was this year just because of COVID yeah um to to see where you you know you know, getting through this season, obviously a lot of people, you know, I'm kind of going all over the board here um, to kind of go through just this year. Um, I know there's been some difficult times. When was like the turning point for you guys? I know I've asked, I know you've watched, you know, interviews with, you know, your teammates that have been on here, but what is, uh, when do you think that was? I think the turning point for us was playing St. Mary's on their senior night at their rank as well in their barn that probably was the biggest turning point for our entire team because that was kind of finally when we realized like man if we play together we can we can play some pretty good hockey and uh it really helped us to come together after that to especially be an unbelievable organization like saint mary's who year after year has a really great hockey program it was like that was probably the biggest turning point for us along with the grcc game that was probably 
a big turning point as well, where we kind of started to finally realize that we can, we can actually play some really good hockey if we come together. You know, I obviously know that, you know, obviously a lot of things changed when Garrett came in and all that stuff, but this postseason run, what, what was that like to be a part of? That was unbelievable though, especially have Garrett, like you mentioned, backing us up in the net. It really gave our team the confidence to make riskier plays and try the difficult passes and try to move the puck as much as we can because in the end of the day that we knew that he was there to stop it if we messed up or something like that. To have that confidence in your defense and also in your goaltending is really just a complete and total game changer. Yeah. Okay, so, you know, this, um, to, to you know, there's not many, you know, there wasn't many seniors on this team, you know, just, I mean, it was you, Roman, Michael, a few others. Mm. But what's it like to kind of see, like, the younger guys come in, you know, and step up and, and uh, to come in and make a difference for these guys? It's, it's really awesome to see especially guys like david schmidt and uh hank callison and guys like that just start to really kind of take part in their leadership role and kind of realize that they're going to be probably the ones running the team next year and uh it's very very promising to leave a team like this especially with only having five seniors on the team and just to know that the team is still in very very good shape going into next season it's it's a very comforting feeling to know two um you know obviously a lot of people will you know will focus on two games the, obviously the last two you know mm-hmm. you know to go into you know the game against Houghton what was you know obviously a lot of people I don't think I mean no one was surprised that you were there I mm-hmm. think everyone was surprised of you know how you got how you got to the championship game and ended up winning it mm-hmm. What yeah, was the Houghton game like for you guys? The Houghton game was probably the most difficult game in the locker room and just like mentally almost going into that game, especially looking at that team, a team that we hadn't played before this that entire season. Same with East Grand Rapids, just mentally going into that game and like even talking with my parents and stuff like that. It was really kind of scary almost going into that game and the nerves were definitely high, especially because – Looking at their record compared to ours, we were like, you know, we we felt like we were going to have no chance against that team. And then I think that we kind of rallied around our coach at the end because he came into the locker room and gave a speech to us that kind of just got us all going. And he, it really was incredible to see how he believed in us. And I think that that really gave us the hope to go out and play the way that we did that game. But it was definitely, definitely a little bit nerve wracking going into that game. So, um, you know, to have the, to go to three overtimes to get the goal in, and obviously everyone's going to talk about, you know, the performance Garrett had. And for you, what was that like? It was unbelievable, actually. Just, uh, it felt like time was almost moving in slow motion when, Horton won the draw back to Schmidt and then Schmidt just takes a shot, just getting the puck on that. And it just happens to go in. It was a surreal moment and an unbelievable feeling because it was definitely intimidating getting on the ice, especially against EGR and seeing their big student section. And it was, it was definitely intimidating, especially with the, uh, the goal 12 seconds into the game that kind of put us back on our heels, but it was unbelievable to come out on top, but, by no means does that mean that they didn't play a very good game because they held us right to it. Yeah. Um, and I believe also your parents were in the, your parents were there. They, I believe they flew in from Colorado to, uh, to be at the game. I, if I'm not mistaken, they did. Yeah. And they actually, it's kind of funny. They watched the Houghton game at home on the couch and all of a sudden they see that we're, winning the game and my dad turns to my mom and is just like we gotta go buy some plane tickets and get on a plane out to out to michigan and it was incredible to have them there and i also had some extended family that lives over in kalamazoo there and it was just unbelievable to have them there and to play a game like that in front of them yeah um you know to to come in after all that you guys have been through 
I think, well, what will be the biggest takeaway that you will take from, you know, this, this season, just, a, just this season alone? I think that my biggest takeaway for me personally, I think that it would be pretty much the same for a lot of guys on the team is just to not doubt yourself and to trust in the process and always, you know, don't be afraid to make mistakes because we made countless mistakes throughout the season. And uh, it really just taught us all like perseverance almost and just kind of being able to keep going even when times are tough and when it feels like everybody's betting against us. How do you, ha- how do you yourself handle tough moments? You know, I, I am, uh, I'm religious and I think that the biggest thing that's helped me is prayer. Prayer is what has helped me probably the most. Okay. Um, so really, and now that, now, with the, you know, now that the season's over and now that, you know, that. I know with, I know school's almost, school's almost done too. Um, To kind of know that your time here is almost up. What's, uh, are you just soaking in all the days? Yeah, trying to as much as I can. Even the tough ones where I got four tests in a day. It's, I'm just trying to enjoy every single moment that I can here because this place has been my second home and it's really forced me to grow up. And I have a lot of memories here and a lot of great friends that I'm, going to be moving on from in the next year and it's it's definitely tough I think it's a little bit melancholy and bittersweet just to think about how we're finally moving on from here but at the end of the day it's we're moving on it's kind of crazy to just think about that this is and and as you know this is a school that you know people send their people send their kids to from all around the world Mm -hmm. um the people that have gone here that have you know gone on to serve in the u.s house the u.s senate have ran for president um have been in the nhl have been in big time you know world cup soccer games or starting in indianapolis 500s Mm -hmm. um what does that mean to have you know to say i went to the same school as this person and to see all the what people have done and now you're making your own mark. Mm. I think it's, I don't think that there'd be a better environment for me to have gone to school in because it's, there is definitely a tradition of ex- excellence is probably the best way that I can put it at Cranbrook. And it's, it there is a definite feeling of you are expected to work here and you're expected to put in the hours by yourself and teach yourself how to become a good student or a good leader or a good manager and just it really helped me a lot to just kind of push myself forward knowing all these great people that have gone here and see what they were able to accomplish and think to myself that I can do the same yeah um what is next for you I'm still not 100% sure I'm kind of deciding between college and uh just three colleges right now and I've actually been offered a spot at uh Calvin University on their D3 hockey team so just kind of tossing that in and trying to juggle all my options. And uh, so I still have the opportunity to go and play college hockey, which is, it would be club college hockey, but at the end of the day, it is still hockey and it's great hockey. Yeah. So just kind of trying to decide between that and just focusing on getting a degree and moving on. So, yeah. Um, what will you most remember about your time playing at Cranbrook? I think I will, me- I will remember the friendships that I made on the team. That and along with Coach LaFontaine. I think that I've had a lot of ups and downs with Coach LaFontaine over the past four years that I've been here. But in the end of the day, he is a coach that forces you to become a better person and a better man at the end of the day. And he he really try to focus on teaching us how to become better people. And I think that I will carry on his lessons that he taught us and the entire team for a long time. Yeah. What, you know... What does hockey mean to you? Hockey means a lot to me. And it's, I don't think that there's one word that I can put it to because hockey has been almost my entire life for the past 14 years of my life, ever since I started playing when I was four. And it's been in my family for a long time. And my brothers are playing college hockey. And it's, it's really a culture almost is the best way that I can 
probably put it. And it's it's been my lifestyle for the past for my entire life. And it's just interesting to think about whether or not I want to continue with that lifestyle or just start a new chapter. And it's it has been incredible to play hockey because it's taught me how to work hard and how to never give up and how to respect people most of all. And finally, I know that, you know, what is to what, what it, and outside of, you know, all this, what is, as you kind of leave, you know, you know, as you start the next chapter, you, you ready for whatever comes next? I feel like I am ready for whatever comes next. And I'm really looking forward to getting to college and just seeing how comparative it is to going to school here at Cranbrook because I'm almost living a college lifestyle as it is, doing my own homework and trying, you know, living on my own basically. So I'm really excited for the future and I'm excited to see where I'm going to end up. So, okay. Thomas, uh, let's get to know you a little bit. How about that? All right. Okay, favorite um favorite player growing up or a- in any sport? I think that my favorite player growing up is very controversial is Brad Marchand on okay. the Boston Bruins. Yeah, okay. that's very controversial, but I don't think there's many people that would agree with me. But well, you're well, you're not well. Then again, I mean, who knows? Um, favorite team to root for? The Boston Bruins are my favorite hockey team. Are you from Massachusetts? I'm not. No. I'm from Colorado. So how did, well, I, I know that, but how did you yeah. become a fan of the Bruins? So we actually kind of met the uh, equipment manager of the Boston Bruins when he was the equipment manager for um, the New York Rangers, actually. We met him at an avalanche versus Rangers game, and it was my brothers who met him first. And we he kind of just started talking to us, and we became very close family friends. And then we kind of followed him out to Boston, and just have kind of been a fan ever since. That's actually really cool. Um, yeah, favorite thing about this, uh, favorite thing about living, kind of living here in Michigan. What, what are you, uh, what's been, uh, what's, what's been your like go-to place to, to, for food or to hang out or something like that? I think that leaving Michigan here, especially if I go back to uh, Colorado or stay here in Michigan. I think that Birmingham has been my favorite place. It's unlike any city I've ever been in in my entire life. And it's, it's really a special place where I've grown up for the past four years and where all my friends are. I think that that's definitely what I'm going to miss the most about here. Yeah. Um, go to place for food. My favorite place in Birmingham is Salvatore's. Okay. Um, Favorite movie? Ooh, I think Miracle. The typical hockey player answer. Gotta I feel be. Like. <laughs> yeah. All right. And here's something. Um, I'll end it on this. What is something people do not know about you? Ooh, that's a, that's a tough question. I think that one thing that many people don't know is that I actually lived in Mexico for six months during the really? second half seventh grade. Yeah, I did a language immersion program in a town named San Miguel de Allende which is actually where we go for breaks quite often in Mich- in Mexico. Wow. That's actually really cool. You've been around a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, well, Thomas, thank you so much for the time as always. Um, and we will, uh, we'll, we will talk to you soon. Best of luck. Uh, congrats on a great season. Congrats on winning a state championship and, uh, and best of luck in whatever you do next. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for your time and having me on here today.